right, so now let's talk about these three different aspects that are agility, plyometrics, and speed, okay? And now, we're gonna talk about each of them individually, but what I want you to do is understand the, how they lay out with one another. There truly are only two different types of things on the spectrum. There's gonna be plyometrics, which are explosive, repeated, and power-generating movements, and then there's gonna be top-end speed. All right, so that is the spectrum of things we can train. Everything that goes into agility is truly about deceleration and being able to control and change because you decelerate, which is slowing down and it's a quick explosive movement and then you accelerate quickly. So agility is just the ability to demonstrate control in your body moving from left to right or point to point and changing your direction. Okay. So today we're going to start off first talking about plyometrics and explosive movement because this is the first thing we can work on. This is gonna be your first step. This is gonna be your 10 yard sprints. This is gonna be your jumping, your bounding, your ability to land and control. This is everything that goes into a short, basic movement where we are absorbing force and then putting that back out. So this is gonna be something that you're gonna be predominantly working on developing strength in the quads, the quads, glutes, thighs, and hips as you push through. Another thing that's really important is looking at the feet and the ankle. So we'll talk about each of these and how they relate to it, but specifically in terms of plyometrics, the things you want to focus on are loading correctly and being able to use your muscles appropriately, okay? So within this space, what you want to think about is that your plyometrics are your ability to absorb force effectively and reproduce it. There's an elastic component of your body, so this kind of springy rubber band-like component where you can absorb force and then reproduce it quickly. So just like a rubber band would stretch and then shoot back off, your muscles also do that which is why the timing is very important. So if you go up and you're loading for a jump, if I load and I stop and I go, what I've done is I've silenced the elastic component. But if I load and jump, what I've done is I've used the elastic component to push back off. So the way to train this is by doing plyometrics, by doing explosive work. I'm not talking about box jumps. Box jumps, you can do them, they're fine, they kind of work, but there's the risk is much higher than everything else. Bounding, so jumping from one foot to the other, jumping, so doing broad jumps or vertical jumps, stringing them together and working on developing an ability to absorb and drive back up. Pop up, so being on your knees and driving up. Med ball throws, uh, single broad jumps. All of these things are great examples of plyometrics. Hurdle jumps are another one as well because you are creating force and you're absorbing it, okay? So what you want to think about is when you're doing this, the most important word you have to remember is intention. It needs to be powerful, it needs to be explosive, it needs to be fast. And this is not something you can rush. Don't confuse plyometrics with conditioning. People say, I'm gonna do squat jumps and I'm, just, I'm jumping and I'm jumping and I'm going over and over again. And guess what, that is not plyometrics training, that is conditioning. If you're doing burpees, if you're doing split lunge jumps, all this stuff, you're doing a lot of it to the point you get tired, you are doing conditioning. That is not training this. Plyometrics are a skill. And the skill needs fine-tuned practice and training to really master. So think about it, you need to do it first when your brain and your body are fresh, when you're explosive and you're ready, after you've primed and warmed up, and then your focus is on the quality and the speed. If I do a plyometric and it's sloppy and slow, I'm learning to be sloppy and slow. So what that means is you scale to what you can do effectively. If I can do a pop-up or a hurdle jump over the 60 inches, that's great, then you work there. But if I can only do a hurdle jump over for a 12 inch hurdle, that's where you're gonna work. If I can only do a speed ladder or something that's quick and explosive, because it's low to the ground, that's where I start. And as you get stronger, you're able to do more. The biggest, the last thing is, the biggest thing that goes into plyometrics is relative strength. This is strength relative to your body weight, right? So if I can develop a bigger strength, meaning that my strength, I can do pull-ups, I can do push-ups, my strength of my body is bigger relative to how much I weigh, that allows me to produce more force relative to that body weight. So as we're training, you can't just go do plyometrics. You have to get stronger and better equipped in moving your body. And as you get stronger, your ability to produce force goes up and then you can do more. But it doesn't happen that I just find the biggest box to jump on and I jump on it. No, no. Start on something you can do quick and explosive and powerfully and then work on getting stronger and then challenge yourself as you can maintain that same amount of speed and explosiveness moving upwards. All right, next, uh, let's talk about top end speed.